Hey guys, it's John with Bleepin' Jeep. Today, we're gonna to talk about getting the pedal set up for your swap, so the accelerator pedal, the brake pedal, and the clutch pedal. And we're also gonna jump into the donor car and talk about some of the items you're gonna to wanna to pull from that before you go ahead and scrap it, run over it with a bulldozer, set it on fire, or sell it, whatever you're gonna do. And yeah, I'm in here with the engine. There's enough room for me to fit. Uh, so let's get into it. But first, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can get updates on this project and all the other great things going on with Bleep and Jeep. And if you could support us on Patreon, we really appreciate that as well. I have the Volkswagen donor car here in front of me. This is a 2001 Volkswagen Jetta TDI, of course. And I'll go ahead and show you where the major things were that I needed to pull. Obviously, everything has already been pulled from this and I've been parting it out too. So there's a few other things missing that you wouldn't have to remove to get to the, uh, the parts that you need. So of course, to get the engine out of here, you'll need to cut the exhaust and unbolt all the engine mounts, the accessories, uh, pulling off like the air conditioning compressor, gave a little bit extra space. Yeah, you can take the whole front end off. That's what most people do. I chose not to do that. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's, it's easier if you pull the whole front end off, unbolt your uh, drive shafts and pull the whole engine and transmission out the front. Uh, you of course want to drain your radiator and uh, disconnect the power steering line. Uh, I went ahead and cut that there, the high pressure line. I left uh, a little bit of rubber on that because I had a custom hose made for the power steering. ALH pump is a banjo bolt on it, which is metric. And your Jeep side, of course, is all standard. The fuel filter and that whole housing, I didn't end up using that, but a lot of people do. So go ahead and pull that out. You can just cut the lines or disconnect them. The coolant ball sits over here too, like the overflow for the coolant system. You can pull that if you think you might want to use it. Uh, it's definitely a good idea. There's some wiring harness that runs through here down to your intercooler and the map sensor that's on the intercooler. So you'll want to pull the whole intercooler in that. The fender's off here. You don't have to remove the fender to get to everything. Definitely want to take the hood off. That makes things easier. Your, your ECU. So you'll need to pull the windshield wipers off. And your ECU sits down in right inside the center of your rain tray here. So uh, windshield wipers and there's like a cowl cover under there and then you can reach in here pop out the ecu uh, and the two main harnesses that come off of that and you've got uh, a tray that the ecu sits in go ahead and pull that tray because that's going to make mounting your ecu easier uh, you've got a part of the wiring harness that runs this way and a part that runs that way and through the firewall part of it over there the other half splits and comes down this kind of tray protector over here. So trace all that back and pull everything that you can. And uh, that's the main kind of uh, wiring thing that you'll need, of course. Uh, if you, you don't need any of this stuff that was on the battery, any ground wires, uh, you know, you can unbolt or clip those. If you're sending the harness off to be done by like fast forward, like I did, then, uh, you know, I just clip the ground wires rather than trying to unbolt them. 
So that was uh, saves a little bit of time and knowing that he's gonna put new ends on there anyway. They're bolted on kind of over in this region. There's two 10 millimeter bolts and this assembly comes off of there. This is your N75, which is the turbo boost controller. So make sure that you get that whole thing, all the mess of vacuum lines that goes into it. I labeled this stuff so I knew what went where, but one line runs down around your turbo and the other ends connect into your vacuum system and other places. One thing that was kind of a pain was the wire harness part that went down into this boot here. So I ended up cutting that boot with a knife and then there's a couple bolts that hold that on there. I think I put those back on, but uh, basically, you know, you just need to unplug that and pull that out of there. And then for the accelerator pedal inside, just unbolt that, it's three bolts, and then clip the wire with some pigtail on it. And uh, no matter what you're doing, really, you don't wanna have to fish all that wire out of there. Now, if you're kinda in the thought process or planning stages of this, and you're thinking, you know, oh, I found a great TDI engine on Craigslist for a good price, uh, I would really encourage you to get a whole donor car because like I just showed you, there's so many different components to this that you're not gonna get with just an engine, particularly the wiring harness. Even if they say, oh, it has the harness, you don't know that they've pulled everything that you need. And it's always cheaper to get everything together like this than it is to go out and source all of those parts individually after the fact on eBay or trace them down. It's just gonna take way too much time and money to get those parts separately. Definitely don't forget to pull the accelerator pedal. Uh, pretty straightforward three 10 millimeter bolts. Just go ahead and clip that wire that comes out of the top of it. Leave yourself you know, three or four inches as much as you can on that wire as a pigtail. A couple other things with the donor car, before you get rid of it, go ahead and save all of the radiator hoses and any of the smaller like heater hoses. The uh, Most of the hoses in the Volkswagen are about the 5 eighths size, which is the smaller size from what the Jeep has. Uh, Jeep has 5 eighths and 3 quarter. Also, most of the radiator hoses on the Jeep are inch and a quarter, same as the Volkswagen. Only bigger one is the lower radiator hose on the Jeep radiator. So save as much of that as you can. There's also some uh, couplers and things in that from the Volkswagen. Pull everything you can from that. You might as well have it. It's not gonna bring you any uh, money from scrap, really. So uh, keep that as much of it as you can. And uh, also keep all the Jeep stuff and uh, some of that may come in handy as well as you're kind of figuring out what your best routing is for some of those uh, hoses and tubes. As far as advice for what to shop for as a donor car, and don't just pick up an engine on Craigslist as like, oh, it's an amazing deal, uh, because there are so many of those little things like the radiator hoses and other things that are just gonna be uh, useful to you. And you know, even if they say they have the whole wiring harness for it, it might be missing something really important that you're gonna then have to search eBay or salvage yards. And around me in Pennsylvania, there's like no TDIs in junkyards. People just don't scrap them that way. So, uh, you know, having to source a, uh, a silly little part, you know, like a, uh, a map sensor plug or something like that would be probably pretty difficult. I'd have to go to eBay or something to, to find that. And uh, those kind of things can be frustrating in a swap like this. So, you know, Save the donor car as long as you can. Get a whole donor car. The best thing to look for is going to be a automatic. Uh, b before the DSG transmissions came out, the automatics in the Volkswagen TDIs were pretty much junk. So automatic cars have a larger injection pump, which is desirable if you're going with bigger power. And uh, they do have smaller injectors. I don't know why they did that. The manual cars had a, a smaller 10 millimeter injection pump, automatics 11 and uh, bigger injector nozzles. So, you know, why the sort of six of one half dozen of the other with that, I, I haven't found an explanation, but uh, it's good to start with an automatic if you can. You're gonna wanna change out the injector nozzles to something a little bit larger anyway. So, you know, don't, don't shy away from the automatic just because it has an automatic transmission that really doesn't matter, you're changing all that. Anyway, the blocks are the same between automatic and manual. So it's not like the manual had a bigger turbo or any uh, anything 
more desirable about it in that way. So uh, find an automatic donor car and you probably get a good deal. Yeah. Going to be swapping the brake pedal over into this bracket and then drilling out all these spot welds in the top of this bracket and welding that to the top of this guy, putting this longer bolt through and adding in that clutch pedal. Now we can plug weld and I'll cut along that line. We'll <clears throat> hang on to this, of course, but that should not be needed. This is what we're looking for. We've got the uh, minimal amount of the uh, stock clutch bracket here uh, left over. Notch that around there to fit underneath. This is factory from the 01. Bolts up underneath the steering column. And uh, we've got actually only two spot welds left there. To fill this piece in, probably end up packing that out of that piece. Cut a little patch filler in there. That'll give me material to weld this to here as well. That little piece ready to patch in. We'll buzz that in there with the welder. And then this guy. Be ready to hook on there. Got plenty of meat to grab onto. That's where the clutch master cylinder comes through the firewall. And to the right is the clutch and brake pedal assembly bracket. So using good old CAD, I designed a bracket. government is happy to provide you with all the CAD supplies you need. Oh no. So that was my template bracket and I adjusted what I actually made a little bit from that. I get this cut significantly. Yeah, just about all the way through. I'll clean that up on the inside of course and so drill the holes. Here's what I ended up with for the final bracket. I still need to weld this together. I'll do that tomorrow. It's getting pretty late, but I did decide we have plenty of room for a little gusset. Can't hurt. So that's going to go down in here. I'll weld up that relief cut, slap some paint on it, bolt it in place, and then my pedals are complete. It's 10 gauge steel is what I'm using there for the thickness. Something I didn't really anticipate with the clutch, and I had to do this last time I did a five speed swap because again, I had to use the old pedals and I was doing it on a 2000. So same exact thing here, except this time I'm using a clutch from a, for a 2001, uh, same part number 97 through 01, I do believe. So this is the push rod for the clutch, and it's about uh, five millimeters too short. And I'm measuring it in millimeters just because, I don't know, it's like three sixteenths or something like that. So 
it's minimally on this too short, but it's actually a good amount of throw on the pedal. So I, what I'm gonna do, and what I did last time, same thing, number of ways you could do this, but I'm making it adjustable. So what I'm about to do is to cut this rod, uh, this plastic part, I'm sure there's a way to get it off. I can't get it off, and I'm sure that when I do figure out how it comes off, it's just gonna blow apart. So let's not get into that. I had this little go-kart piece sitting around, like a uh, drag link kind of thing, reverse thread on one end, threaded on the other. It was too long, piece of it sitting here. So I cut it, drilled and tapped the end, quarter 20. Not dead center, but that shouldn't matter. I am not a machinist with a vise and a hand drill. Uh, so anyway, uh, you could do this with threaded rod and a Heim kind of joint or a, an eye of some kind. This is just what I had sitting on the workbench, so it's what's being used. And uh, I've measured this to a length that I'm gonna cut, and then this rod is, uh, I believe, close enough to quarter 20 that I can use a die and cut threads. That is my plan for now. Should this plan fail, what I will end up doing is probably just sleeving this and uh, finding a piece of tube that fits over it nicely and then cutting this to the right length for what I need. Straight to plan C, which is um, my calipers are, are fairly inaccurate, I guess. This is uh, not close enough to quarter 20 to tap. I mean, it, to cut threads with a die, so uh, I have a welder, and uh, I like welding things. I've got adjustability on this end anyway, so how about I drill this to the outside diameter of this rod, plug it in there, tack a weld on it, call it good. Goodbye threads, I just worked so hard to tap. So I ended up drilling a quarter inch part of the way and 15 64ths on the last bit of this and pressing this together to give me a really snug fit on this. So I'm not even gonna bother welding that. It's, uh, there's no way it's gonna come apart just by pressing the clutch. And uh, even if I were to hook my foot on the bottom of the clutch to pull back on this, that's not gonna be the first thing to come apart. So. Uh, I've got the eye end of this, thread this in, and we'll give it a test fit and see where we're at. So there's my clutch push rod. There's a hole in the end of the pin that the push rod goes on, and uh, so a little baby R-clip snapped right on there, two thick washers, and that's pretty good. And my clutch throw feels so much nicer and I actually hadn't even broken the strap on the slave cylinder before this so the first time I pushed this pedal that popped and that's really nice it's out same level as the brake pedal now and very happy with all that so pedals done well uh Pedals aren't quite done. Couldn't hide this. You saw that dangling there. That's my brake switch. I need to put some kind of extension on that. All it really needs is a little spacer on here. One thing I do want to point out with the clutch and brake pedal assembly, the 9701, maybe earlier than that too, I'm not really sure. I know I had a 94 that didn't have it this way, but the neutral safety switch on the clutch is on the push rod. The switch is like a barrel shape that fits over that push rod. And uh, if your Jeep's already a standard transmission to begin with, then you know, leave that alone. But if you're swapping in, you really don't need that. I didn't even realize that it should have had that until I was uh, you know, further along into the swap. So what, you, what you're gonna wanna do if you're doing cruise control is like a brake light switch that will 
uh, give the signal to the computer when the clutch pedal is pressed so that you know your engine doesn't over rev if you push the clutch pedal in while it's on cruise control. So it'd be a good idea to fabricate something in with that while your pedals are out. I didn't. Uh, so I'm going to work on cruise control a little bit later. Uh, first priority for me, of course, is just getting this thing on the road and get the bugs worked out of it. I definitely will be doing cruise control and when I do, I'll make a video on that so that I can help you guys understand uh, how to do that. Working on the throttle pedal assembly here. This is, these three bolts are what line up with the pedal itself. I need these captive nuts so that I can uh, put this together in two stages if I want to. So that can go on there after. This is put together, and I had this tacked together, and then I got a little too excited while uh, testing it and popped the pack welds, but I'll just put that back together. It felt good where it was, so put that back together on my same tacks and burn it together a little bit stronger, a lot stronger, and I'll show you how that goes into the Jeep. Really not much to it. I've got the three holes for the pedal itself. Again, those are captive nuts I welded on the back side. And this part here is the Jeep factory uh, hinged pedal. As you know, probably the, the Jeep pedal was cable driven. This is electronic. So drive by wire. And the two holes that bolt that to the firewall are right there. And then the pedal will hang off of that. There's the bracket installed onto the factory bolts for the throttle pedal. See the second nut up there. So I'll go ahead and put the Volkswagen pedal on there now. But that'll thread right into those three holes. I made them quarter 20. All right, there's the pedal bolted up. Again, three quarter 20 bolts just holding that in. And nice and sturdy. Pretty well spaced from the other pedals, I think. Hop in and test it with my foot one more time. So brake, throttle, brake, throttle. Seems to be a comfortable amount of space around there. Nice comfortable amount of throw. And for it to get hung up on, it's good. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please, if you didn't already, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit us up on Patreon if you can. We appreciate the support. Thanks so much and have a great day.